Hello and welcome everybody, King Demps here bringing you another event preview. This time we're going to be taking a look at the Blast Fall Showdown. That's right, this is basically the qualifier for the Blast Fall Finals. There are two spots on offer to the two teams that successfully make it through their bracket, which you can see here. We've got two sides of the bracket. We've got a side of the bracket that has Heroic, Poggers, Dig, Fiend, Complexity, MIBR, OG, and Pain. And on the other side of the bracket, we got VP, Movie Star Riders, Liquid. Don't know how to say them. 9 Ounce, 9 Z. Haven't got a clue. Evil Geniuses, Mad Lions, G2, and Lin Vision. Now... The first thing you'll probably notice is that one half of the bracket is significantly stronger than the other half. I would say you've probably got the two favourites in Heroic and OG. Maybe even Complexity would find themselves the third favourite on one side of the bracket. And on this side of the bracket, I think the only three teams that anyone will be taking seriously will be G2, Liquid and VP. But all three of those teams, I think overall would be considered in worse shape than Heroic, Complexity and OG if you lump them all together. Right, what we're going to do is we're just going to take a look at each matchup individually in the first round. Um, I won't talk too much about some of them because they should be pretty straightforward. I'll talk a little bit more in depth about others. And then we will see who we think should make it through on each side of the bracket to the Blast Fall Finals. With me? Perfect. Right. First up, we've got Heroic versus Poggers. We're going to take Heroic there. Um, not going to think too much about it. Poggers should have absolutely no hope in hell. Uh, especially in a best of three if it's a best of one yeah an upset could be on the cards best of three makes it very very unlikely and poggers aren't even playing with nork who they got through the qualifier with they are playing with a different player so i highly doubt poggers are going to do anything here now next up we got dignitas versus fiend this is one of the more interesting matchups actually and a very tough one to call obviously both teams are firmly within that sort of tier two bracket we saw both of those teams at the recent iem fall eu and just to remind ourselves of how each team did oh hang on got to move this out of the way uh we'll go down here because we don't care about the group c teams just to remind ourselves of what happened at iem fall eu for each team dignitas went two and three as you can see here are their games they beat sprout and mad lions beat the two weakest teams in the group and lost to the three strongest it kind of their results go exactly as you would expect they beat the two weaker teams uh, they lost pretty convincingly to vitality a little bit less convincingly to og and then gave ents a close game I would say Dignitas are towards the top end of that tier 2 scene, as are, I think, on the flip side of Fiend. Now, Fiend, obviously pretty handily beaten by Nip, a close one against Skade, beat Fnatic, who severely underperformed at that event, and then these two wins are, are huge. Really, really well played to Fiend for taking DBL Pony and FaZe so convincingly. Uh, ended up on tiebreaker because the head-to-head -head phase was better going through to the playoffs. And then obviously Fiend were very quickly uh, punted out of the playoffs by G2 and then lost 2-0 to Copenhagen Flames. Now, I think what this says about both teams is that both teams are just... They're at the top end of that Tier 2 scene. I think they're just below the very top of the Tier 2 iceberg, who I would say are teams that are looking to kind of make that transition into kind of being considered Tier 1 teams. So Movie Star Riders, Copenhagen Flames, Ents are the kind of teams I'm thinking of who have been historically up until this point playing lots of Tier 2 CS uh, and only recently and now kind of looking like they might be able to make that transition, that step up into being a regular Tier 1 team that we see at these events all the time. So it makes it pretty difficult to pick between these two teams. Now, moving on to the map pool, it gets a little bit interesting here. Fiend do not play Vertigo. They will very much likely ban it. Dignitas don't really play Ancient. Um, I'd expect them to probably ban Ancient, particularly considering Fiend are an Ancient team. As you can see, 75% win rate across four maps. That means they've won three of them. Um, now, the problem with banning Ancient is it means that Dignitas would have to let Dust 2 through. Now, obviously, you can see fiend play a lot of dust too and they play a lot of mirage and they're very good on both of those maps i think dignitas want to try and stay away from dust two and mirage i think they want to not allow i think dust two probably would be the one not allow dust two through so 
I suspect Fiend will ban Vertigo. I suspect Dignitas will actually let Ancient through, and I think they're going to ban Dust too. We should see a nuke pick from Dig. That should be a no-brainer. It's Fiend's weakest map out of the ones that they play regularly. Yes, they played a bit of Overpass, but nowhere near as much as they played sort of Nuke, Inferno, Mirage, Dust 2, those four maps. So I expect to see a nuke pick from Dignitas. As for Fiend, what do I expect them to pick? I expect they'll probably pick Mirage or Ancient. Mirage would be Fiend saying we back ourselves, we think we're the better team, we'll go with a, team, a map that's very good for us, even though it's a decent map for Dig. I think Ancient is probably more of a punish pick. Dignitas have only played it once. Did they lose or did they win that map? Let's check that bad boy out. They lost that very closely to Copenhagen for Fames, best of one, a long time ago. Dig haven't played the map since. I think if I was Fiend, I would probably go for the Ancient Punish. It seems like Fiend are a pretty solid team on the map. They've definitely played it more than Dignitas have, and it looks to be a decent map for them. I would probably go for the Punish pick of Ancient. Knowing the way Counter-Strike teams tend to think, I think that Fiend will probably pick Mirage. And then as a decider, I think we'll probably end up getting Inferno. I think it's good for both teams. I think Overpass maybe... I think Fiend will probably ban Vertigo, but oh, Fiend have already banned Vertigo. I think second rotation, that's the thing. I don't see what Fiend would ban second rotation. They're either going to ban Inferno or Overpass second rotation. Those are the only things left for them to ban in the second rotation. Um, basically, the series that I think we're going to see, to cut all the rambling short, is I think we're going to see a Nuke. I think we're going to see a Mirage. And then I think we're actually going to get Inferno as the decider. Now, with that in mind, I think that is a decent set of maps for both teams. I think Fiend should be slightly favoured on Mirage. I think they're going to really struggle on Nuke. And I think Inferno is a 50-50 map. I know Dignitas have the better win rate, but they have a much smaller sample size. I think that's a 50-50 map. I think it's going to be a very, very close series and a tough one to call. I'm going to take Fiend because I think they're in slightly better form than Dignitas at the moment. But it really could go either way on this one. Tough to call. Right, now we're moving down the bracket to Complexity versus MIBR. Got to be perfectly frank here. Think Complexity take this one easily. MIBR are obviously freshly playing with two brand new players. That is Wood and Turtle. I don't expect much from MIBR. They, MIBR, they haven't had a lot of time together thus far. Complexity should take that one fairly simply. Not going to look too much into that one. OG versus Pain. Now, this is another one that should be fairly simple to call. OG should take this one pretty convincingly. However, OG have not looked that good outside of Flames. Flames E, however you want to say it. He's obviously looked absolutely stellar for OG pretty much ever since he joined. But since the player break, Flames has been on an absolute tear and looked like an incredible player to add to the team. Um, really, really solid on CT side. Can play those close-up aggressive positions, which is where he tends to play. Often the guy looking for some aggressive pushes and aggressive entry kills on the CT side. And on T side, he is an amazing hard entry. He goes in first. He gets one or two headshots. He cracks open sights. Amazing player. Just wanted to shout out Flames there. Been so impressed by him ever since he's joined OG. The problem is, outside of Flames, ever since their EPL group, where they went 5-0, and absolutely smashed everyone, looked incredible, they've looked very, very shaky. Particularly Mantu. I know his overall stats since that EPL group. The EPL group was an amazing high for him, and he's not hit the highs in the period since. Fair enough. The EPL group stage was incredible from Mantu. who's putting up nuts numbers. But he's looked a little bit shaky since, and he's gone missing in some very key games. In their playoff run of that EPL, he basically went completely missing. And since then, he's been shaky. Tends to do well in the games against the smaller teams, the games you'd expect OG to win, and tends to be looking a little bit more shaky in the games where maybe they need Mantu to actually put up some numbers to get OG over the line. Mantu is going to be somebody I'm going to be looking at very, very closely in this event. I expect them to beat Pain. I do. I just wanted to mention that they haven't necessarily been on the best of form. But I'm going to be keeping an eye on Mantu. I expect him to put up numbers in this series. And then I expect him to start to struggle up here if they when they play Complexity. And maybe if they get all the way to the game against Heroic. Which I think will be the, the final team in that bracket. Boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, and anything in between, I need to apologize. I am going to repeatedly call this team Movie Star Riders. I know that they are called Movie Star. I know that it's a brand name. I'm just so brutally English that I cannot help it. That 
every time I read it, my brain goes movie star riders. It's going to take some getting used to saying it out loud repeatedly to not call them that. I just want to apologize in advance. I do know how to pronounce it correctly. It just, every time I say it, it automatically comes out as movie star. Sorry. Right, let's move on to the other side of the bracket. Verse Pro versus Movie Star Riders. Now, this might be one you would expect me to say, VP, move on. Absolutely not. I think VP are on a wobbly run of form. They are probably going to drop Sanji after the major, so this team itself kind of knows that it's dead in the water. Like, this five will not be playing with each other after the major. I'd be very, very surprised if they are. So this is definitely a match where an upset could be on the cards. A big thing that I think Movie Star Rivals had in their favor is they have a very solid team-oriented setup. They have three players that can put numbers up for them, whereas Virtus Pro are very much relying on the duo of Jame and Yekinda. And if Yekinda's hyper-aggressive playstyle is not working, or if Jame is doing Jame things and saving every round, Virtus Pro can look very, very shaky. I think particularly on their T side, their T sides look absolutely atrocious if your kinder or jame aren't just cracking open the rounds and getting twos and three k's verse pro look awful on their t side their t side has been really really bad recently and they basically get most of their work done in general on the ct side as for movie star riders obviously they lack some tier one experience they have played precious little games this core against tier one teams obviously the most experience they have had will be recently at iem fall that does stand them in good stead because it means they're coming straight off the back of a tournament where they were playing tier one teams. They showed a huge amount of resilience in that tournament going 0-2 in the group to come back, get themselves into the playoffs and march through those playoffs very successfully and finish so highly at IEM Fall. Now, the map pool is going to be an interesting one between Verts Pro and Movie Star Riders. They kind of are both operating with a five map pool at the moment. Verse Pro's highest win rate is actually on Vertigo, but they most recently lost it 16-1 to Entropic. So Verse Pro's map pool is actually looking really thin. And if we actually let's just go, let's just go and have a look at the, the map page. Verse Pro's map pool is looking abysmal. They don't play nuke. They don't really play ancient. They've got like mediocre win rates on all the maps that they do play. Verse Pro uh, Vertigo, as we said, is their highest win rate, but they most recently lost it 16-1 to Entropic. So how confident are they going to be feeling on that map? This is another aspect of Vertus Pro that worries me. They don't have a home map that you're like, bam, they're nailed on to win that map every single series. That's a real problem in tier one. And particularly when like they are, they operate with a five map pool. You can't get away with a five map pool in tier one CS. You are not going to be a consistent top 10 team in the world with a five map pool. I know Vertus Pro have been sitting in that sort of top 10 region basically for the whole of this year. Honestly, they've been a filler team in the top 10 more than anything. They haven't really deserved that spot outside of some tournament runs at the start of the year. And it was that immense success at the start of the year that's kind of kept them as high as it has in the HLTV rankings up to now. As for Movie Star Riders, they're kind of operating on a five-map pool as well. They don't play Dust 2. It's their permaban. They play Mirage, but they're awful at it, as you can see. They've got some very good maps in Inferno and Nuke, but because Nuke is a Verts Pro permaban, having Nuke as a very good map doesn't really help you in this series. As for the veto, what am I expecting to see? Verts Pro will ban Nuke. Movie Star will ban Dust 2. Maybe we see some shake-up. I don't think so, because Movie Star's permaban, Verts Pro will play and can win and Virtus Pro's permaban movie star riders are very good on, so I don't expect to see any weird like, oh my god, we've been practicing our permaban. I expect Virtus Pro to pick Mirage. It's open, it's a rap movie star riders will leave open and they suck at, I expect them to pick it. Movie star riders, I expect to pick Inferno, even though Virtus Pro can play it, and maybe there's like a punish pick of Ancient here. I don't, movie star riders, they played a lot of Ancient, not been so great on it. I expect them to take Inferno. However, if there are, is a team that I would not be surprised that they might actually go for a punish pick i think a lot of times in cs teams don't go for punish picks they would rather go for maps they feel strong on rather than try and target a map they know the enemy is weak on movie star riders are actually a team i don't expect them to have that ego about them and they might go for the punish pick of ancients so take the movie star riders will pick inferno prediction with a little pinch of salt I've actually put down VP to ban Vertigo. I know that seems weird because it's not a bad map for them. However, I think their re most recent struggle against Entropic on that map, 16 won by a team in the same region who they're supposed to be comfortably better than. I think that's going to get inside Vertus Pro's head and I wouldn't be surprised to see them ban Vertigo on the second rotation. 
I expect Movie Star Rider to actually ban Overpass and then try and get us to Ancient as the decider. If we do get that veto of Mirage, of Inferno, and Ancient, I actually favor Movie Star Riders to take the series. I think that's a better veto for Movie Star Riders. I think Virtus Pro are really, really suffering from a five map pool where they don't really have a super strong map. I think Movie Star Riders have a few strong maps that they can maybe try and go to. They're gonna obviously gonna get new bands out, but but whatever. I expect Movie Star Riders to actually take this series. I'm I'm gonna put it out there. If if they can get a good veto where they get their Inferno and they can get something like Ancient as a decider, I fully, fully, fully back Movie Star Riders to do something in this series and cause the upset. Now, Liquid versus Nines or whatever. Yep, Liquid should take that one every day of the week. We're not gonna talk too much about that series. Evil Geniuses versus Mad Lions. Now, the only reason we're really going to talk about this series to any length is because I think Evil Geniuses are a joke of a team, and they have been pretty much all year. They've been atrocious. I know they played recently with stand-ins, but before that, they were terrible anyway. They did almost nothing at the IEM Fall NA, basically the major qualifier. They did almost nothing, beat like nobody good, and still managed to make top five and secure a legend spot by virtue of the RMR system. I don't think the RMS system is terrible, but it got pretty fucked up by COVID and not having all the events that we should have. And this is an example of how the system has completely screwed up to give an evil geniuses who've done nothing of merit all year a legend spot of the major. Yeah, the RMR system definitely cocked up a little bit on that one. But if we just go down, like, look, like, look at this. Like, EG, EG, basically their only map they can play is Inferno and they don't have a winning record on it. Whereas Mad Lions have tons of maps they're willing to play. Mad Lions actually have a full six map pool. They are competent on all six maps. Yes, let's take a look at Dust2, for example. They're not playing the highest quality of opposition all the time. That's not their fault. They've been toiling away in Tier 2, but they've done very well recently in Tier 2. And as you can see, Waro2K's got some absolute nuts rating in the past three months. Huge, huge player. One to look out for the future. I expect Mad Lions to take this one. Some people might call it an upset. But it isn't really based on the current form. Mad Lions are a top 30 team. A top 30 team playing in Europe against a higher tier of opposition than Evil Geniuses are playing against. I expect Mad Lions to take this series. EG can't go anywhere in the veto to get a decent map. Yeah, I expect Mad Lions to win this series. And this EG team are literally just limping along until the Major. The second the Major is done, I would be shocked to my core if this lineup didn't break up. Wouldn't even be surprised to see Evil Geniuses just drop out of CSGO for the time being. Now, moving on to take a look at what how we expect the rest of the bracket to shake out. Particularly who we expect to take those two spots available for the Blast Fall Finals. We've got to take Heroic on this side of the bracket. They're a top five team in the world. They look really good in pretty much every series they play. Yes, most recently they did lose that series to Big, but they had nothing to play for, literally nothing on the line. So I really don't read too much into that. Apart outside of that series against Big, they generally are incredibly competitive and very difficult for anyone to beat. And the only teams beating them are the best of the best, your Navis, et cetera, et cetera. I expect to see Heroic make it all the way through there, particularly considering that their semi-final matchup will probably be a team they should be heavy favourites against. Expect Heroic to make it. Outside of Heroic, it's obviously going to be between Complexity and OG, realistically. I'm going to take Complexity to make it all the way to the semi-final, the final of their side of the bracket, and take on Heroic. I think they'll lose, but I expect them to get there. I just don't have a lot of faith in OG. They're not consistent enough for me. They can show up and look like a top five team in the world, and then they can show up and look like they don't even really deserve to be in the top 20 sometimes. Particularly OG are one of those teams I feel like are a bit of a gatekeeper team for the sort of top 10, sort of top 5. They will beat the teams below them and they tend to not really get anywhere close against the teams above them. Complexity will be an interesting matchup, but yeah. I take it that the semi-final here will be Complexity Heroic and Heroic will win and grab themselves a full final spot. On the other side of the bracket... <sighs> This is, uh, side of the bracket is actually a heck of a lot harder to call, particularly because I think the first round matchups are a lot more variable. So this, this semi could be VP versus Liquid. It could be Movie Star Riders versus Liquid. I think this semi, I know it says quarterfinals, but I'm just treating the two sides of the bracket as two separate sides of the bracket. Like this is, this is just dumb. Like if there's no final, what's the point of calling it a semi-final? It's not, it's a group A final. Like, come on, sort yourselves out. Sort yourselves out, boys and girls. Anyway, 
So we could see, like, I could see EG or Mad Lions. I mean, obviously, I can only see G2 getting there with them. But basically, like, Liquid and G2 should get to the semis. And then who they play against, I'm not sure. I think if Liquid play against Movie Star Riders, they probably make it. Okay, I think we've got to say that it's going to be a G2 Liquid final, but it could very easily be like a G2 VP or a G2 Movie Star Riders final. I could see either happening. I think G2 get there by virtue of being like, look at this. Like, they're literally not going to have to beat a top 30 team to get to this, like, final. G2 have such a high level of individual skill and they have such a high ceiling they also have such a low floor where they can just disappear in series i'm gonna go out on a limb and i'm gonna take g2 i'm gonna say heroic and g2 are gonna be the two teams to qualify simply because g2 i think have such a weak side of the bracket even the best teams outside of like them it's either probably you've got to say it's liquid but even then liquid aren't a top 10 team in the world right now liquid aren't doing much damage at tier one events like i got to take G2 and Heroic. That's my final answer. Locking it in. I hope you enjoyed the video, guys. If you did, like, comment, favorite, subscribe. Tell your grandma. Uh, and if you didn't, you know the drill. Get out of here.